everybody. We Hi. are here today. I am Addie and this is Abby. Hi. <laughs> Abby is a brilliant brush creator. If you're new here, she is the genius behind Uproot Brushes and um, just incredibly prolific. I would say a pioneer of brush making. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and today you. we are going to be using Abby's Printworks, Printworks Media Brush Pack. I should have had you say it. <laughs> um, and showing you how to make etched style print photos. Did I get that right? Yep. Yep, exactly. So one thing, and I did not tell you to prep on this at all, it just popped into my head, but can you kind of walk through in like basic terms what etching is in the printmaking process? So etching is when you take a sheet of metal or other material, but it's usually metal, um, and you gouge out little stripes or lines or textures that will hold ink. And then you apply the ink and you wipe it off the metal so that it only stays in the little gouges that you made. There are different techniques for making those gouges. You can um, etch them in, which is the where the word etching comes from, which is a process of chemically removing material using acid. Or you can okay. scratch them in with a little scribe, which is called scraffito. Or yeah. you can scour them on with something rougher. Or you can rake lines and lines in the opposite direction. Um, so the process of etching is basically making places on a sheet of metal where ink will be trapped and then wiping it smooth so that just the ink remains and then you run it through an, a press so that the ink is transferred to the paper. Okay. Thank you for that explanation. I, sure. when I purchased this pack, which um, it is linked pinned in the chat, if you're watching live, it's also in the video description below. And if you can't find it, you can type exclamation point brushes into the chat and the link will pop up with the uh, nightbot. Um, and what I was saying was when I first got this pack, I was like, I don't even know what these print styles mean. And like, this is so amazing. I didn't know that like these processes existed. I just, it wasn't something that I knew much about. And so it actually led me down a lot of rabbit holes learning about it. But what I appreciated is that you have a PDF included for each each style of yeah. printmaking that you have covered in the set, and um, and between that and the preview images, you provide a lot of good information about the style and like where yeah. it comes from and how it's done in analog media, which is very cool. Yeah, I I try to provide uh, some context so people aren't just you know faced with a massive wad of brushes and a lot of confusion. So hopefully yeah. I achieved yeah. some some of that objective. Yeah. Um, um, I totally lost my train of thought. I got distracted. <laughs> but <laughs> um, do you want to hop right into it? And Yeah, sure. Okay. okay, let me share my screen. Okay. So today we're going to be making a little, um, let me actually show you. We're going to be making something like this, something that looks like a um, notebook with this. The, uh, Addie actually made this beautiful brush that makes this um, the ring binder on your um, sketchbook. And we're going to have a pet portrait that looks like it's etched like okay. this. So um, in the end, you will end up with a pet portrait on a notebook with some washi tape that I've also included the um, brush in the freebies. I think the freebies are linked below, Addie. Yes, so uh, okay. right after the brushes link in both the chat and the description, the freebies are linked and you'll get, uh, in addition to the brushes Abby just described, there's also a color palette that you might want to give it a try on your first pass of following this tutorial because- Yeah. Um, following it in the order that Abby is going to do and with those exact colors will give you good results and then you can experiment and play from there yeah or you cannot follow the rules and do whatever <laughs> you want <laughs> exactly 
Um, okay, so I'm just going to head over to Unsplash and find a cute pet picture. So what you're looking for is a picture that doesn't have too much like extreme contrast. So this one is not a good pick because it's super white and it's got a super black little cat. What you want is something with a nice tonal variation. So I actually have a few that I've downloaded already. Whoops. Where are the downloads? Oh, don't worry. Can't find them. Let's just keep looking. Um, they move the location. Uh, <laughs> um, and whenever is a good time, I can pop in and show some examples. Yeah. As well. Okay, we'll do we'll do this cocker spaniel. He's quite good because he's got quite a bit of a mixed tonal range. So. We've downloaded it. And once you one when, when you're on Unsplash, if you're downloading something, you just uh tap this little download button and then it will the pop-up will appear and you'll tap download. And then this little downward arrow is where your downloads are. And, and I you're just in Safari. Tap it. Yes, I'm in Safari. I just tap it and then I tap the arrow jumping out of the box, and then I just tap copy. Because saving it to your camera roll as well as having it in your downloads, it's just doubling up on storing things that you don't need. So yeah. that's my five cents worth of that. Okay, and then I just paste it straight into my Procreate canvas. And now I'm going to make a bunch of layers above. And my original, I need it to be in grayscale. So no color and the easiest way to do that is hue saturation and brightness and the saturation slider just slide it all the way to the left okay and now the magic part is going to happen the etching so to start with i'm going to set the the my original layer to multiply and i'll explain why a, a little bit later and then the layer above my image layer tap it and turn it into a clipping mask because we only want this etching to be acting on that image and what we're going to create is a little stack that is essentially going to pretend to be one layer so that's what um what clipping mask will the effect the clipping mask will have on it so we're going to select black and then the brush set I'm going to use is the etching brush set from the Procreate Printworks pack. And at the bottom of this brush set, there are three etching brushes that will give you instant etched look when you apply it to a photograph. And they are called hard mix brushes. So I'm going to just go for parallel etched hard mix. And I'm going to swoosh it over the whole page. And this is what it looks like. It looks like sort of a gray pinstripe nothing. But the magic happens when you change the blend mode of that layer to hard mix. See? So, what, so cool. What that blend mode does, it's translating all of the grays into pure black and white. So you can see here on the dog's face. Let's turn that off. That's mid-tone gray. It's going yeah. to be translated into thin lines with white in between. And the does the, the thinness of the line correlate then to yeah. um yes. Yeah. So the where where it's whiter, the lines will be further apart and more gappy. When it's blacker, the lines are really close together and more dense, like this area here of the dog's cheek and mouth. You'll see it's yeah very dense. Something that I really like about this effect as well with the the etching lines that you did is the um, they pick up a lot of thick and thinness. Um, yeah, that makes it look like you did hand draw 
each yes, single so, yeah, horizontal so line there. Yeah, it's <laughs> it's pretty cool. I, I really like the way that this effect works. Um, yeah. And it looks quite sort of organic as well, which is which is nice. Okay, and then in the layer above this, we actually don't want, what we want to do now is to translate all of this black into the color of our choice. So I make another clipping mask on top of that. And I set that to screen. That's the blend mode. This The blend mode screen will translate everything that is black into the color that I fill that layer with. And okay. I'm going to be choosing this uh, pink color. So what we're creating now is the bottom layer, the first layer of color in the etching, and it's going to be the most color. So we're going to go for the lightest color. And there we go. Our dog has been translated into pink etched lines but now I think I want a bit more detail so I'm going to group those and then duplicate it but I actually don't want every line that is pink there to be translated in this layer what I want is I want let me isolate this one I want more black and more white so I want it to be more contrasty so that there are smaller areas of black, but they're only in the very darkest areas. So I'm going to go to my curves. And now, so I think I want this more white, more white, and darker there. So we can add white here to this by sliding the top right-hand node more to the left. And that's the only adjustment you're going to need to do. If you slide this one, you're going to be adding dark, which we don't want. We only okay. want to add light. You can um, you can do a little bit of adjustment by making it a, a dot in the center of the line and dragging it up. But I don't know if that's going to be necessary here. Okay, so we've still got detail. We still can see the dog, but there's far less going on there. So let's turn everything back on and change the screen color to blue. See, so everywhere where the top group is lying on top of the pink is now blue, but it's not all of it. So now we've got some detail and we've got the pink in the background. It looks so okay. good. So, um, just as you were explaining about the blend mode or the clipping masks, I was thinking it ties mm -hmm. in with the blend modes so fully here and you the perfect little bit of your explanation about what a clipping mask does and how it inherently yeah. um, takes not just what's painted on the layer, but the attributes of that layer. Yes, yes, exactly. So if these weren't clipping masks on here, that hard mix layer and that screen layer would be acting on every layer below it. But because yeah. we've made it a clipping mask, that hard mix layer and that screen layer are only acting on this layer here that they're clipped to. Yeah. And then the whole group inherits the bottom photo being on multiply, which causes the colors yes. to blend as they do exactly. in the final image. Exactly. Okay. Now I want to this little picture only so i've turned off the background and i'm going to go to the wrench menu and copy canvas i'm going to turn those off and now i can paste it as just an individual picture to stick into my little notebook that we're making yeah okay let's change the background color to this nice light blue all right now, I'm going to turn that off for a sec and grab white. And one of the free brushes in this little brush pack with the black cat is this A4 page or square page that we made for you. So let's do a square notebook page. 
You just tap in the middle of the screen and bam, you have a notebook page with a shadow and everything all done for you. Super easy. I love how easy that is. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's fun. Okay. And now let's put our dog photo in our notebook. Let's see. Maybe we should crop it a little bit. Make it a bit smaller. Ooh, look at you with your fancy cropping hacks. <laughs> oh, don't you do that? No, I, I do. I, think or, I, I either do that I or I drag things to the edge and stop the um, transform tool and then drag it back so that it's yes. cut off on the side. I do that. Um, I, I realized though, I think I, I don't, you, you just like inverted it, right? Yes. I oh, think do I do the extra step edges. of copy and paste, um, oh. but the, the, this is way better. Okay. So he's in a spot there. Let's give him a shadow. Um, actually, I think it need, he needs a bit of paper texture. So let's oh, make yeah. a clipping a clipping mask above that and we'll grab white. And then one of the freebies we've got are these two paper texture brushes. These are from the um, Procreate Printworks pack. So these are direct freebies to you as a little sample of that pack if you want to um, go and check that out. They, all of the paper texture brushes in that pack have an overlay and an underneath brush. And they all work with the color white. So you grab white and you swoosh it over the format and it just looks like gray nothing. And then you set it to overlay and you can see the texture. It's pretty cool. It's and so then to cool. boost the texture underneath that, create another clipping mask layer for your picture. Set it to linear burn stay on white and use the recycled paper brush and then swoosh over it and you can see it gives Ooh. you all the little flecks and grunge in the paper but i think i'm going to drop the opacity a bit so that we can see the dog a bit better and, it, and now it just looks cool. like a aged photo it's very cool yeah it does i really like these paper texture brushes because they are so quick to use and they just boost the awesomeness of any picture instantly. Yeah. Um, okay, let's give them a shadow underneath. So select the image because we just want that rectangle mm -hmm. and then fill in a layer below with black. We're going to Gaussian blur that a little bit and then drag it a tiny bit to the one side and warp it with warp you can create those little curled corners just to make it look like it's curling up from the format this is the coolest part <laughs> and then we can set that to about 50 percent so it doesn't look too over the top right now, oh, hang on, let's move everything a tiny bit because it's not really in the middle. Okay. Oh, now let me show you how to use that lovely um, ring binder brush. So this brush is directional. If you draw from the top to the bottom, the holes are going to be on the right-hand side of you. If you draw from the bottom to the top, the holes are going to be on up. What am I, left and right? The right-hand side. Yes. <laughs> yes. So um, what I'm saying is draw from the bottom to the top. Yeah, and okay. if you start and it it doesn't face the right way, then you know and you can undo and draw in the exactly. other direction. Exactly. And then I'm going to, whoops, I'm going to grab a normal smooth brush and just erase this little bit that's hanging off. 
Yeah. And erase this little bit that's hanging off. How easy is that? And how effective? I mean, that's like a notebook instantly. It, it it's is. It's really and cool. It's just like so perfect with the page that you made it. I can't wait for it. It's the, very, the very washi cool. tape step. Oh, the washi tape. Yes. So I made this washi tape brush for you guys as well. Let's see how big we want it. That seems okay. And then this brush, you just need to draw and then hold still for a few seconds to make a straight line. The same with the um, spine binder brush as well, actually. So draw your washi tape and hold still until it sticks. There we go. What I love about this brush is that it is just the right amount of transparent so that you see yeah. the drop shadow below and the edge of the photo. And it really, it's so accurate to what actual washi tape looks like. And um, then I'm going to make a shadow underneath. So I tap the washi tape layer, tap select, make a new layer below, grab black and fill it. And then Gaussian blur, just a teeny weeny bit. Drag it off to the edge a little bit and drop the opacity. There we go. So we've got a happy dog stuck down in our notebook. Yay. And it's got this cool texture from the etching. And that was like so fast. That was 10 minutes. Um, You're kidding. So oh, damn it. I was hoping to drag <laughs> it out of it. <laughs> No, we have more to go through, but I love this because I always have like a billion photos of my cats on my camera roll and I never have anything to do with them. Although I, I do just sometimes look at how cute they are, but I, um, I love this as a new way of sharing them or creating some kind of digital scrapbook. So, um, yeah. the freebie pack is a precursor to an upcoming TBD pack that Abby and I want to release together about making scrapbooks or sketchbooks in Procreate mm -hmm. using the page assist feature. Mm -hmm. um, and, and just like being able to make this digital collection of a bunch of pet photos or travel photos. I, I think it's a cool way to actually utilize some of those memories that you have stored. Yeah. 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 My phone um, is also just clogged, clogged, clogged with dog pictures. <laughs> yeah. And like, I always take more, even though I have plenty. <laughs> I don't know when I transitioned from taking pictures of my children to taking pictures of my dogs. But it yeah. happened, and I'm I'm deep in there now. <laughs> oh, that's too funny. I don't have kids to to have that like milestone marker, <laughs> but um, it'll happen. It'll I wonder. Happen. If, <laughs> <laughs> I suppose as they grow up, you just naturally take fewer photos, or as you have more. There was always like more photos of my oldest brother, the firstborn, and then yeah. just like substantially less <laughs> for my other brother, and then even less for me. <laughs> yeah, I Absolutely. It's a terrible thing, but it happens. It yeah. 100% happens. <laughs> what really matters are the actual memories in your head. <laughs> yes. Um, so Diane asked a really good question. How would you add pages so you can actually have flip pages? Um, and Ooh. I'm going to pop out of this canvas to show you. Um, oh, wow. Your gallery is beautiful. Oh, thanks. <laughs> I actually don't know what's in it right now. Um, I don't think I have this set up, but this is just an empty thing. If you wanted to set this up and you already have your notebook drawn, like Abby showed, to make it into uh, flippable pages, you would go under the wrench and then under canvas. Below animation assist, the page assist toggle is there. And then from here, it shows all of my layers as separate pages. And you can see I've lost everything except for this random drop shadow layer that I'm on. So to change that, I'm going to select in my layers panel, all of my live layers and group those together. Now we're all back to where we started. And then 
I think it's showing all of my hidden layers too, but on the, um, if I drag my group to the very end, it then in your layers panel is dragged to the bottom. Um, if you tap on it, you can select this background option. Oh, um, that's genius. Yeah, they added it after the page assist feature. So I don't know that it got rolled out in the, yeah. the launch of um, 5.2, I think was the big launch. Um, and I'm hoping that they'll add a foreground option like they have in the animation assist yes. so that we can, what it would be ideal is to use Abby's overlay brushes as the foreground and then the um, base layer paper brush as the background and and to be able to sandwich then everything in between. Yeah. But in the meantime, we have the background. So then, then you can flip through each layer as a page. And so if I just grab a pencil to draw and um, draw on that page, then when I move to the next page, it's gone, but my background is still there. Um, let's see. So and this, this exports as a PDF. You can export this as a PDF and you can actually import PDFs and view them in this format. Stop. I didn't remember that. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah I, so, I really like that. When it exports as a PDF, does it keep the background for each page? Probably. Um, Let's find I, out. It, it imports as opaque um, sheets, like, like a filled, each page of the PDF is opaque. So it's not like separate things above each other in layers. Okay, I'll have to go find that. Um, but I love that as as a way to like, then you could get it printed or, um, yeah. yeah, that's very cool. Um, yeah, I really like this because it means that people can import the PDFs that we make to go with our brushes um, into Procreate and they don't have to be toggling backwards and forwards between um, programs or, or um, apps. They can just be in Procreate, go and look at the instructions and then immediately navigate back to the art and carry on. Yeah. Um, I would even think like you could just like draw next to it too, if you move it over on the page and, and have oh, the yes. guide side by side to like yeah. really, if you're, if you're yeah. following on something that's a specific technique. Um, yeah. I think, let's see. I am uh, making sure that I'm getting the questions. Okay, can I get away with making this a double spread by flipping the page using the existing? I think what you're asking is if you can um, just in the, I figure out where I am, in the transform, use the transform function to make it a two page notebook. Is that what you're asking? I think, think. you need a wide format a long wide format like that so that you could have the pages side by side yeah Maybe. and I think you I think you could um but the freebies the shadows are a certain way and so you might yeah they're on the that side they might shadows. look a bit weird yeah yeah um, and I think I think this um page view functionality is it's great, but it doesn't work exactly like, let's say, when you get a catalog from, uh, you know, Walmart and you're viewing it online and you can digitally turn the page. It's not like that. It's just a way of looking at a PDF on in Procreate. I think that there are limitations that need to be sort of... Um, you know, understood. Well, yeah, they need to work out some of the kinks a little yeah. bit, but... Um... But I, I agree. I think that uh, when they do, it'll be really functional. And for now, it kind of feels like some of the things that we do are workarounds. But that's okay yes. for now. Yeah, yeah um, absolutely. And when we do release the brush set, there will be a 
I don't know if this is the right one. I have a, I have a few different ones, but there will be double-sided spirals. So if I zoom in on this, um, it's a little washed out, but it, it, it would set you up to put a page on either yeah. side and make it a two-page notebook. Um, what I wanted to show next was some tips on selecting photos. Um, mm -hmm. So let me figure out where I am. This is the not great example. Okay, so <laughs> Abby talked about the looking for the midtones and the higher contrast um, and selecting a photo with the subject more in the foreground and not necessarily um, like blending into the background. So this is a really funny photo of my cat. <laughs> that would be a great example of uh, not super easy to work with photo. So this is this is a little pokey <laughs> sitting like pokey does. Um, and some of what's causing the issues here is that she blends into the couch. Her yeah. face is really dark. There's not a lot of high contrast there. And so all you really see are as her, her little tummy fur and then anything that the light from the window is touching. Yeah. Yeah. Um, then this next photo also pokey. Um, this is a much better contrast. I still have, you know, this is maybe not perfect. I think this is my hair in the image, but because there's a lot more high contrast in her face, especially just being able to see her eyes, the reflection of the light on her nose, um, and have a little bit more definition of like her chin hairs. You can actually see the subject <laughs> a lot more easily. Um, always striving other... for people to not see my chin hairs. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh my gosh, for real though. I, I like I have this yeah. one and I, I just feel so self-conscious about it. <laughs> I have the exact exact same and it always grows back. I just like dream oh of the God. day that it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> and um you don't I don't know how hair growth works. The like feels like there's nothing for months and then all of a sudden it pops through and when it does it's <laughs> yeah. Long. There's no like partial period. It's bizarre. <laughs> I'm just like exactly. really glad to not be alone in this. <laughs> oh, exactly. This struggle. Um, the other thing I wanted to talk about with this image in particular is the etching scale works super well for it because it's close up. If I zoom in on her face here, um, you still get a lot of the etching effect while being able to view what the image is of, if yeah. that makes sense. Yeah, so that's really I, cool. For a contrast, this is the last example that I have. And when I have the, um, I, I think that this was see find where I am I think this brush size was like three quarters of the way up mm -hmm. um okay so it was like 60 percent so pretty large and it feels like you lose a lot more yeah. of the detail um, yeah you, especially like zoomed out you can't really see any of the cat's face um but yeah. if you work on a smaller scale so I'm just going to transform it down you do have maybe a little more detail there. This is still not um, yeah, probably lit in the way that I would want, but there are ways that you can work around that as well. Mm. So when adjusting the brush size, um, it's always easier to have it on a larger size if you're filling the whole page, uh, but the scale of these moves as well. And so if you get to a point where like you want your grain, which is this wavy pattern, if you want your grain scale to be smaller and you don't want to be like scribbling in for forever, um, you can change that and it's a reversible change. Uh, if you go into the brush studio, you can adjust the grain size on this top brush only. If you go under grain and you can move the scale. And so if we want it to be smaller, I would probably just knock it down a couple percentage points. And then I can hit done and now it's super small, but when I'm on my largest brush size or not largest, I go up to around where we were before. 
I don't know if you can see the difference. Um, maybe if I hide. No, I drew over the same one. Um, but that can be really useful if you're working with something that has a lot more detail or yeah. um, you want uh, you, if you want the lines to pick up more. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then to change it back, because that's important too, you just go down to about this brush and hit reset brush. And it'll have you double check. And then you hit done. And then it's back to factory settings. <laughs> Abby being the factory. <laughs> <laughs> um, the other thing that I wanted to pop in with I know I keep saying the other thing, <laughs> just one more, um, is Abby kind of walked me through when we were preparing for this, how to add more colors and some tips for that. So this is a three color image that I did. Um, if that it's... one is so cool. That's my notebook group. Um, there it is. Okay. So this is just the image and I have all of my three groups in here. So Abby's top tips uh, helped me with this. So if I have, um, what am I trying to say? Okay. Show so when us, selecting show colors. Us just the, <laughs> show us just the original image um, in black and white at the bottom. Ooh, okay. Thank you. Okay, so here's the original image, although I think I did some stuff with it. I did some color and lighting adjustments um, to like decrease the contrast of the back sky here. And then I increased some of the highlight of the eye. Um, so it's not fully the original photo, but then if I turn back on, you can see um, a lot of this blends in, and that was that was because of the adjustments that I made originally. Then in the next layer, it's multiplying my next color on top, like we talked mm -hmm. about with the groups. And so the um, you're just like progressively getting darker and each group and each color that you add is going to make the next um, group darker. So for this one with this photo, although I don't know what this is, should I just delete the whole group? No. No, it just turns other things on. I hate that. It always does that with me as well. Okay. It's turned on your <laughs> um, other layers above it. Got it. Okay. So if I turn both of these on, um, let's go back to the photo. Okay. So this photo, I, in the curves adjustment, made the background super light. And essentially, you're only leaving in the bits that you want to be super high contrast. Um, so when I pile them back on, that's where we're at. And then the third group, this last photo here. I washed out most of it. So now it's just the inner corner of the eye. Um, I darkened a little bit of like the edge of the ear or the edge of the back to enhance those like boundary definition of the subject. And then when I turned it all on. That is because, really cool. Because of the hard mix blend mode, um, it kind of washes out all of those weird color corrections that I did in the image, you don't see any of that. And so it just brings through the highest contrast stuff. That is lovely. Uh, it was all thanks to you and your <laughs> very patient explanation <laughs> of the, um, the hard mix blend mode because it wasn't something that I'd used before. Um, I think I also shifted these off register um, just slightly so that the edge of the ear doesn't line up here and you get a little bit of bonus color. Um, that is awesome. Yeah, it was it was fun to experiment with that. And so Diane asks how you can adjust like just small parts of 
the image. So I can walk through that with you here on this black and white image. So if I wanted to, um, just judging where this is at, um, like original image, I'd probably want to lighten up this mountain here in the background and then add a little bit of reflection to the eye. So I'm going to make a duplicate of my layer and then under the adjustments wand, ooh, I don't know what I clicked there. Um, under, er, I can't talk, under curves, not the right one. <laughs> under curves, under this little arrow here at the top, you can switch between layer and pencil. And so to make just very specific adjustments, if you switch to the pencil option, it automatically adds some nodes to the curve line. I don't know why haven't figured out how to turn it off, but you can go ahead and delete them. And um, it won't show if you move anything because you haven't brushed anything in. So let's start with, um, this is just the soft blend brush from the airbrush panel, but I threw it into the freebies um, folder just because uh, it'll be easier to access then. So I'm if you aren't you working from the I also have problem. multiple duplicates of that brush all over the place. It's one of my most used. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. It's such a good brush. So then I would zoom in. And I should also say um, this will only work with the Apple Pencil. If you have a third party stylus, um, the pencil filters don't work. So then well, that's I'll good just... to know. I didn't actually know that. It's a little big. Right, I'm just going to draw in. Again, you won't see it because I haven't adjusted the curves at all. But now when I go in and adjust the curves, I can kind of get a sense oh. of how much I've added there. So that's a little Turn sneaky, them into but... a demon cat. <laughs> but the cool thing about pencil filters is that you can erase or smudge them. That is so cool. And what I love about using um, the curves is that it just enhances what's already there. So you're not adding paint to the layer. Um, and let's see. So the, the other thing to be aware of is that you can't, um, you can only like go to whatever the slider has allowed you to. So this is the level of curve adjustment that I can do. If I wanted to go in and add more, I uh, just tap the screen once and this tiny little menu comes up and I can hit apply and I stay in and everything is reset, but it applies those changes. So I'll need to go in and make my adjustments again. So I'll do that. And then I can go in and add even more white on top. Um, okay, so that's just going to add a little bit. And again, it's gonna look super weird when you do it on the photo. Like, that looks crazy. Um, <laughs> but looks like he's the really suspicious. <laughs> and like very surprised. Okay, that's a little big. So now I'm just painting in all of that. That's, I think I want to. This is so handy. This this is probably the best tip I've seen in years. Oh my gosh! Oh, I'm so excited because it's like now you I've know everything. Fiddle <laughs> with photos so much. Um, I I, I I usually don't go for the brush adjustments and things because. They're so difficult to control where you're adjusting, but this is really different. I fully agree. I think it's it's great for photos in particular. Yeah. It's it's much harder to control when you're on a painting, and yeah. um, I think that there's so much that you can do just with brushes in general and color adjustments for paintings. Um, yeah, that I use just the layer adjustments most of the yeah. time. But for photos, it's it's very cool. So I, I applied once more, and I'm going to lighten this up even more. Let's just try to figure this. Oh, now he's really standing out more, the cat. Yeah. OK, I feel like that's pretty good. I maybe just want to yeah. touch a little, ooh, maybe not that much, a little bit on his paws. Not that much. Um, 
If you wanted to go in and add darker places, you can do that by hitting apply to. And then as Abby showed initially, if you um, slide the bottom node along, it will allow you to make things darker. So this time, let's see, instead of sliding the top, just move that down. Okay. So you can actually see my whole screen. Okay. So now when I go into my layers and drop this on top, um, I still think the scale might be a little big for this, but if I show you comparatively, you can see way yeah. more of him. Yeah. Um, and so when I did the three color one, I enhanced different parts of the photograph for each. Um, and I just like, it was a lot of trial and error. So I don't know that yeah. there's like specific tips that I can give for that. But um, if you play around with it and just know that every group that you add, it's going to be darker and darker, yeah. um, you can get very cool results. Yeah, I think the playing around part, it, you can't stress it enough. You, you can make yeah. something that somebody's taught you how to make, but then the next step is to change it up, do your own thing, fiddle around, mess around with it, see what happens, and make it your own. Yeah, um, I think that that's like where the the like you get to inject your personality into things. Yes, yeah, I agree. Um, it's my favorite. Like when I make tutorials with specific brushes, I super love when people find their own brushes and recreate it using that because yeah. just that simple twist can make it like a whole new piece. It's very cool. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Um. Oh, this is a amazing point. Needing pair says, could you select an area and then do the pencil adjustment in the selected area? I, I think you can. I'm pretty sure you can you work can. in live selections. Yes. Um, so you could use automatic for that um, to just pick up specific color tones in your image. Um, or freehand select to fine tune. Oh, I just deselected that, but let's let's make sure that that works. Um, yep, there it is. It's letting you yeah. do it. Oh, very cool. Yeah. Um, let's see. And needing prayers. I hope everything's okay. We're sending good vibes your way. <laughs> um, Cheryl says. I have the print work set and I'm excited to get more out of them. Um, because you have the set too, be sure to check the uh, screen print section. There is yes. a hard mix brush down there as well. That one works amazingly as well. There's a lady called um, iPad Lettering, Nicole. Yes. I did a tutorial with her quite similar on the screen print brush and how to use it for the same purposes so if you look her up you can have a look at that as well I think there's a freebie there too let me see if I can pop in the link quickly um because that is a really good tutorial and it's cool to see the things that you did a little differently there too yeah um, we this... did some like um lettering with some bumpy edges and stuff yeah I am dropping this into the chat. Can I um, demonstrate how to make the colors go slightly off register? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Cool. Let's so let's start again with another one. No, not the clipboard. Just um, a quick update from Leanne before you jump into it. Um, yep. Leanne did what we were talking about and did some trial and error and was able to make the uh, two-page spiral notebook work. So there's your proof in the pudding. It works with the free. Cool. Awesome. Yeah. 
Um, so let's grab a picture of a doge. This kitty is actually really cute. So um, cute. Let's have this one. If you are following along or if you follow along later, please post this and tag us, especially if you are um, working with pictures of your pets because... Yes, please. See it. I'm dying to see everybody's <laughs> animals. Yes. Um, okay. So Kitty is in. First step, make it black and white. Second step, make it a clipping mask. Remember to make it multiply. Have two clipping masks because the top one is going to be set to screen. Grab black. Go and grab the etching brush. Let's do this one. And set it to hard mix. Looks good. And this set to screen. And I'll grab the pink. Okay. And group it all. So that's essentially a single layer. Duplicate it. And I want the darker tones to be the blue. And we're going to adjust this to make it. So that just the dark tones are blue, the darkest darks. Yeah, let me show you the difference. That's my first layer. Hang on. So that's the original. And that's the lighter version. So original, lighter. Can you see how the... That works. Okay. Yeah. And put it all together. And then to get the offset, the slight offset, let's zoom in a bit so you can see. We want to move the ripples from the top one just a little bit so they don't match perfectly. So move the entire group. So there we go. And now you can see that little bit of blue there and in the eyes, the little bit of blue. It actually is a really, really nice effect. It gives it a bit more sort of um, glitchy um, analog look. Cool. Yeah, I like how um, it's almost like chromatic aberration. Yeah, effect. it is. It's like makes it look like a little bit 3D, a little bit. Yeah, it's very cool, futuristic. So let's um, let's just put it all together quickly. Yeah, you can make it a bit smaller. And this time, let's put it on an A4 page. Here. I really like these page stamp brushes. It just feels so instant. Yes, it's super satisfying. Um, I love those things that are just immediate gratification. Yeah, Gave you too. a ton of time. It's amazing. Okay, I also um, wonder, yep. it almost, because the scale was so close to the photo, it made me wonder, could you just use the stamp on a layer below the photo and then um, oh, yeah, adjust could, to the size of the photo? I suppose yeah, the proportions would need to be the same, but it uh, would it yeah. work as a clipping mask? Maybe not as a clipping mask. Let's see. Okay. Uh, let's turn this into paper texture. Right. Let's add paper texture here. And so we've just got a reminder and linear burn. Yep. In case anybody um, is joining us partway through, just a reminder that you can get the freebies that Abby has here on screen, um, following the link pinned in the comment in the chat or in the description of the video. Um, and then the etching brush comes from the Printworks Media pack for Procreate that Abby made, and that is also linked in the video description and in the chat. 
it doesn't work with the clipping mask because the it's clipping to the shadow as well. As that makes the sense. Is, so it's not it's not working. Okay. So um, let's just oh, we try. add a what's it called a drop shadow. What is going on there? What's that? Oh, oh, it's these are still on. That's what my problem is. <laughs> um, so I'm so glad that you are showing how to do the warp of the shadow because I've tried this and I would always warp the photo and not the shadow. And oh. it makes so much more sense that this is how you get the better when results. You when you warp the shadow, it makes your eyes believe the photo is warped without yeah. actually warping it. It's Our brilliant. Eyes are I was just tricky. I was being literal thinking if the photo is curved, there would be the distortion on that, but it yeah. It's such a cool effect. I don't want these little doodads to. We have people, this is so cool. Um, we have people from Denver and from Mexico and from Malaysia. Awesome. And then Abby, of course, is in Australia and I'm here in Chicago. It's so cool, the reach. It is cool, isn't it? I'm always yeah. just so humbled by the fact that people actually want to get up and watch me do anything. <laughs> I know. It's like little old me. And, and then like you ever <laughs> found me in the first place. <laughs> like, how did that happen? Right. This is the. I love this washi tape. I, you'll have to part. release all of your other ones in a, in a whole pack of washi tape because it's yeah. just so brilliant. There we go. Oh, now we're getting more people saying where they're from. Italy and Phoenix. Um, I started to learn Ital Italian this week. And so, um, no, I only know buongiorno. <laughs> I was trying to think of what good evening is. But no. <laughs> I'm like five days in. Yeah, Give me a little more time. <laughs> cool. Any? Does anyone have any questions? I'm thinking I got all of them. There was one that I had. Let's see. Oh, I want to show you something quickly. Um, so let's say you've done all the putting everything together and you would really like the cat to be bigger on the little piece of paper that you've got them on. Don't bother going all the way it back to where you started and cut it cutting it out and cropping or whatever just go to where the image is that you've inserted and duplicate it so and turn that one into a clipping mask too so your original is going to be showing is going to be dictating the format and the one you turn into a clipping mask you can just whoops you can just make it bigger and it will clip perfectly to yeah. The first spot and just and you don't have to remake the shadow or remake the sticky tape or anything that's so cool especially as we're talking about like using page assist you could just duplicate your yeah. your photo layer and then pop a new one in as a clipping mask and yeah. make a whole spread I love, time i love clipping masks they are so clever it's so handy. Um, I had pulled this message up. Uh, I love when Abby shows us how to use her brushes. I agree. I always learn so much from Abby. And I wanted to say if there's any specific brush set that uh, you want to see us put together a tutorial or anything, even yeah. Abby's been making brushes for a long time. So even if it's way back from the archives, it'd be fun to, um, yeah. it'd be fun to explore some of those. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I think I got all of the questions, but um, 
anything lingering or if uh, if you're watching this later, you can leave questions in the comments below. And um, while you're here, you can uh, give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you want to see more. Um, and then Abby and I, I think we'll be a little more back on a regular schedule yeah. um, for live streaming. But the best way to find out is to um, turn on the bell notifications for whenever we do go live and uh, follow us on Instagram if you have it, because yeah. we will always post on our stories. Um, yeah, when that's we'll do out. a little countdown and say how long until the moment. The, the countdown really helps me because people <laughs> can't, uh, I mean, I can't even convert Australian time to um, US time, etc. So the countdown says this is how many hours you've got to go. And it works perfectly for me. Yeah. Um, time zone math is the most confusing. <laughs> it's it is. Like, it is. So much more difficult now that we're in daylight savings because everybody, not everybody, but like countries change at different times. Yeah. And I think now Abby and I are two, our time zones are two hours further apart than they were our last live session. <laughs> I think so. I think you're right. Yeah. Because it's yeah. Um, like... Because we've you, gone on to daylight have, wasting and you've gone on to daylight saving. So yeah. we're like messing each other again. Yeah, exactly. Um, one more question. Paula asks, would it be crazy to play with warping the etching lines to follow contours of the subject? Not crazy at all. I think that's no, a awesome. really Go cool idea. I'd Liquify love to see it work talking. amazingly for that. It could look like it's... Um, the faces are money. You know how those etching lines there show the queen's cheeks and stuff. Yes. <laughs> oh my gosh! Is that, you know what I mean? That's exactly what this looks like. Is that yeah, really? That's, that's etching. That's how they 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 make the you know the plates that you always see in those gangster movies that they're trying to get so that they can print yeah. money. Those are yes. etched. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, I feel like it's all clicking in my head. Like we have <laughs> all of these, we have an example of etched, etched paper, yeah. etched prints right here. That's so cool. Um, oh, good. Paula says that that's what she was picturing. Um, okay, so I think I think that's it for this tutorial. Again, all of the links for everything is in the description below. Um, and just thank you guys so much for hanging out with us. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate it. We'll see it. you in the next one. Bye, Bye everyone.